An alkyne is a molecule that has a carbon-carbon triple bond. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to name alkynes. Now, I'm assuming that you're already familiar with the concept of naming an alkene because the rules are pretty similar for naming alkenes and alkynes. If you're not familiar with the rules for naming an alkene, I suggest that you go back to the previous video and, and watch that and then move on to this one. So when we're naming an alkyne, our job, first of all, is to find the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms that contains the triple bond. And then we want to number that carbon chain starting at the end that is closest to the triple bond. So we don't care anymore about giving small numbers to our halogens or branches. Our goal is to give smallest number to the alkyne. We are going to um, start the name by locating and naming the substituents or the branches or the halogens that are on the carbon chain. In this situation, we have a fluorine on carbon number four, so it's four fluoro. And then we'll say the location of the triple bond using the, the lowest numbered carbon as the location, two versus three, the lower number is a two. And then we say the name of the parent chain. Um, this would be a pentane if it was an alkane. So it's pent, but instead of saying pentane, we say pentine. So just like with an alkene, we're changing the ending of the name, the ending of the name to communicate that there's a triple bond present. Uh, and that's, that's all there is to name it. So it's, as you can see, it's very similar to naming alkenes. Here's another example. Start by identifying the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms and then number those carbon atoms starting at the end that is closest to the triple bond. We don't have any substituents or branches or halogens on this molecule, so we don't have to name them. We just start by giving the location of the triple bond. It starts at carbon number one. We have a four carbon chain that's but it would be butane, but since there's a triple bond, it's butyne. We have one last example. Um, give the or locate the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. It looks like that. And number that chain starting at the end that's closest to the triple bond. The triple bond is dead in the middle of these, no matter how we number left to right or right to left. The triple bond is going to be on carbon number three going to carbon number four. So I'll just number left to right. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have two substituents on this molecule. We have a two methyl. And we also have a 5-methyl. When we have two identical substituents, we don't have to say 2-methyl, 5-methyl. We don't have to say methyl, methyl. We can say dimethyl. It lets everybody know that there are two of them, although we do still have to use the numbers for each. So we say 2,5-dimethyl. This means, or this is a shorter way of saying 2-methyl, 5-methyl. Then we give the location of the triple bond using the lower number, 3 Six carbon chain would be a hexane, but this is an alkyne, so it is a hexine.